Hey creative friends, today I have a mini art haul video for you. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm in this little mixed media art supply addiction phase craze at the moment, which is very dangerous for the wallet, um, but great news for art stores. So I went to the art store last Friday and I got some watercolors, some more neo colors and more ink tanks blocks. So um, I'm going to swatch them all and share with you my thoughts on them. And then I'm also going to create this little mixed media floral piece in my sketchbook. And if you want to see how I go about doing all of that, keep watching the video. If you've been following me for a while, I thank you so much. But if you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do. It'll really help me, really help the algorithm of YouTube know that you like my videos. And with that, let's keep watching. All right, so let's go through the list of what I bought. The first thing that I got is these six colors from M. Graham. So M. Graham is a brand from, I think, the US. And I have a couple of M. Graham colors already. So let me show you what I have. All right, so these are the M. Graham colors that I currently have. So I have Payne's Gray, oops, Payne's Gray, Olive Green, Azo Green, and Gamboche. So Gamboche is this beautiful, dark, almost orangey um, yellow that I have. This is actually the second tube of Gamboche that I have because I love it so much. I've actually finished one whole tube. Azo Green is stunning. It's a stunning green gold and this is the first tube I have. I haven't bought another one yet because I actually bought a whole other uh, green golds that I'm using. Um, one from Mission Gold and um, an olive green from Mission Gold and I feel that those are pretty good so I haven't replenished the green gold but it's so good. Um, olive green is terrible. Don't use it. It is very very opaque. Uh, looks so muddy. I don't like this olive green. I tried using it for a while and now um, I'm not using it ever again. And Payne's Grey is beautiful. It just works for me. So I only have these four M. Graham colors, a couple of which is really beautiful. And um, yeah, and I just filled my palette with other colors. And I don't know if you follow Mind of Watercolor. Um, he's got like 300,000 followers or something. He does mostly realistic landscape and he loves M. Graham. And so I decided to try a couple of M. Graham. So sorry about this backstory about M. Graham. I know that their paints are really lovely because it's extra liquidy. It's made from honey, uh, as in one of the binders are honey. And therefore M. Graham paint never really dries on the palette fully. So if you look at my gamboche here, I don't know if you can tell, um, it compared to the other paints, I've not sprayed this down today. It is shiny and extra liquidy, so it really activates very, very fast. So you can pick it off your palette really quickly and the vibrancy, it's all there. So that's Gamboche and that's my Payne's Grey. Always very shiny, easy to get to. Those are the two I have on my palette. And after watching Margot Halleck, I don't know if you follow her channel, amazing watercolor channel. I love her channel. I'll link her channel in the description below. She did a review of M. Graham and she talked about all the colors that she loved from M. Graham. I think she called it her top 10 colors of M. Graham. And after watching it, I was just so inspired to get more of M. Graham paints. The other watercolor I got is Opera from Holbein because, well, M. Graham doesn't have this color, it doesn't have Opera. And the opera I'm using also, I think currently is PWC Shinhan, I think. And I feel like, mm, I wanna try something else. I wanna try a new opera and Holbein is always reliable. Karen Dash Neo Color 2 Extra Colors. Look at how pretty these are. So my last art visit, my last art haul, I got some Neo Color. These are the Neo Colors I got. And look at me, it's already broken. Half of them, they fell to the floor, they broke. Some of them broke into half, but it's fine. You can still use them broken. So this is the first batch of Neo Color I got, which are more the sort of almost primary and um, colors which I, I know I will use, I know I will like, I know they fit into the current color uh, schemes that I work in. Uh, but as I started painting more and more and I started to uh, 
like I mean you know want to try out more colors these are the new colors I got so they're even more um, off as in uh, different and I think I got a few pastel ones so so the interesting about Neo Color 2 which I'm still learning to use is um, you know creating values dark and light and when you do layering when I do layering um, that's kind of like how you want to you want to start achieving depth right in your painting and to achieve depth you can't just use colors, you gotta use values. So therefore, that's why I gotten a whole bunch of these really light ones, because thinking that they will be the light value color. But also it could be just, you know, not pressing so hard. I don't know, I'm still learning how to use these. Let me know in the comments if you have experience with Neo Color and, and um, you know, wanna use this. Okay, 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 this is, I'm very excited. I've never used this before. Ink Tense Blocks. What are they? They're not crayon. <coughs> Sorry, they're not crayon. They're not colored pencil. They are supposedly inks. They're inks in a block. They come in a pencil format as well. And I tried them both at the store. But I am more uh, curious about these blocks because I do have colored pencils and I feel like the colored pencil medium somehow is not really i'm not really being drawn to it at the moment and this one is in a block format and it says here that it is highly versatile water soluble blocks which create vivid like color when combined with water it actually becomes permanent once dry so it is water soluble at first and then when it dries it becomes permanent how cool is that that is so intriguing to me well it's sort of like i guess acrylic right when you mix it with water and i've not even opened this yet so i'm gonna do that right now you see a little price tag here that's 40 dollars 50 cents australian dollars for 12. okay not your cheapest thing and I want to be very careful of them because I don't want them to be broken or anything. You know, it's got to be super, super precious. Nah, it won't be super precious. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. So, yeah, these are the Ink Tense blocks. And I can't wait to just swatch them out, play around with them, and see how they work and how I can, you know, incorporate these into uh, my paintings and then the final thing that I got which is just uh, basically a fine liner and I usually use uh, I mean I have a whole bunch of Sakura Pigma let me see let me see if I can grab one of those yeah so these are the ones that are very famous in the art world Pigma Micron uh, I got a bunch of these when I was in Singapore, I think, and they're like two dollar, two or three dollars there. But in Australia, they're like five bucks. So instead, I got this one, the Uni brand, two of them, uh, and it's only like three dollars each, and they're fine. They work perfectly fine. And I don't use them in my art per se. I kind of use them to write on, swatch, uh, sign uh, my paintings and stuff. So there you go. This is my little art haul let's dive right into the actual uh, testing and painting alrighty let's go ahead and swatch these beautiful paints so I'm just going to pour out a bit of each color and you might be seeing this on fast forward Super excited now. I'm gonna use my size 12 Christie Rise round brush. Really, really getting into this brush lately. I love this super pointy tip. I don't think I have a brush with a, with a stiff brush with this pointy a tip before, so let's try it. Let's do it. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Alright, because these are straight out of the tube, I'm able to get a nice thick mixture. I'm gonna just paint over 
the words so I can see how transparent or not it gets. Oh, delightful and pigmented. Okay, okay, I find it um, not super bright, but I think I'm just gonna just put a little bit more saturation here. A nice. I think it is quite. It does the job of a cerulean blue, and I like that it's not super bright because, you know, you need a blue which is kind of mild and sky light, a perfect sky blue that can get really light and really intense as well. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Let's do this cobalt teal. All right, so a lot of people call this turquoise. I call it turquoise. Already, it's just very, very predictably nice. It's transparent, even though it, it's like really on its thickest um, value. And it fades to a beautiful, lovely, turquoisey blue. Can you imagine like oceans, beaches? So nice. Set green. Really excited and nervous at the same time when I do this. Okay. It is quite opaque, it feels. And you heard how like disappointed I was with the olive green, right? So somehow I don't know why, it's maybe giving me a bit of that vibe, that not so vibrant green kind of vibe. It's pretty dark. It's pretty mm, dull. And uh, I actually have just also bought a whole Vine Sap Green, which is so, so bright, so pigmented, and then so popping. Quin Gold. All right, let's see. Okay, okay. Mm. So I told you I was looking out for a yellowish, orangey gold. I love this. It's so nice. Can you imagine um, sunflowers just giving a bit of that yellow poppy of that gold here? Oh. Beautiful. Similar to um, Quinacridone Gold of Daniel Smith, which I had a tiny tube of, but it's gone, it's finished because it's five mil. Uh, very similar, I think. And also if you have Aussie Red Gold by Daniel Smith, I've always wanted that color. But ironically, it's very expensive. Although I'm in Australia, Aussie Red Gold. So this is a really nice gold. I think I'll be using this quite a lot in my paintings. Okay. What do we have next? Quin Rose. This is your permanent rose, like, you know, PV19. Oh. Ooh. I like it. It's not as magenta -y as the Rembrandt one. It's more corally, which I really like. Oh, how can you not like that? So feminine. So feminine, so soft. And it lightens to a beautiful, beautiful corally type. Yes, definitely gonna be in my palette, okay? Finally, burnt umber. I wonder what this will be. Burnt umber. Hmm. Nice. I like it. I love, okay, for my burnt umber, I'm always scrubbing. I don't know why I'm always trying to scrub burnt umber from my palette. Maybe it's the brand I'm using or whatever. But I find that if I'm starting to use this, it will be very beautiful and convenient for me to just pick this buttery burnt umber off my palette. Okay, the paper is starting to, to peel. Okay, so that is the paper issue. This is my sketchbook. I'm not sure why. Not very pleased with that. It's okay. 
All right, the last color that I bought is Opera Rose by Holbein. Oh, yes, this is the sound you make when you see a neon opera color. I love it. I love super, super bright, but not uh, annoyingly bright. You know, there's some neon pinks or neon colors that just fall into the un slightly annoying um, <laughs> spectrum. Like, it's just so bright that it makes you feel a little bit artificially and annoyed. And I think that is what's happening to the current opera that I'm having, struggling with. And I think I'm, I, I need to do a comparison of those. But I like that, apart from the peeling of the paper at the back, which is annoying me, I am loving this opera. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. All right, so this is the swatches of the new color I have. I must say, I'm enjoying the blues. I really don't know about the sap green. Am I a bit sad about that? I'm not sure. I really need to look at my other sap greens that I have to compare. Loving the gold, loving queen rose, loving burnt umber, and of course, loving the opera. A bit sad about the peeling. Not sure why, but um, yeah, there we go. These are new color swatches all right i'm gonna now swatch the derwin intense blocks never tried them before can't wait i won't be writing any pigment color because um i don't think their names to these colors so you know the colors will just speak for themselves i'm using just a canson xl sketchbook to do this and let's go so let's try this yellow Ooh. Okay, blending it with my finger. It feels like pastel, like soft pastel meets oil pastel meets color pencil. Okay, very cool. I wonder what these are for. Are these for mixing? Let me know in the comments if you know what these wells are for. Okay, now I am going to just go over a little portion with some water. <gasps> gasp! Oh, gasp, gasping, gasping for air. So, so bright and wonderful and intense. I know why they're called intense, ink tense block. So that is ink, soluble ink, I have no idea. All right, I'm going to try this. I'm going to push down a bit harder now. All right, this is an orange, and then maybe do a something like that. Um, it's going to be a bit messy. <sighs> you will feel the temptation to blow things away. And I'm not a fan of messy <laughs> art supplies. I mean, I like how watercolor is very, very neat. So I will be interested to see if I use this or avoid using it because it's messier. Oh. So nice. It retains a bit of that um, crayon, pastel kind of thing. And I'm gonna see and how these two blend. Oh wow, so pretty. Too much water, not too much water. Okay, so the yellow is being overpowered by the orange at the moment, but um, yeah, you can see how you can blend the colors. I'm just gonna keep going. I'm just gonna, gonna paint over that water. And that's a really cool effect to just go over water. <gasps> wow. I'm gonna try to hold back the gasping sound effects because it might seem a bit annoying. But I love that red. I don't use this kind of red a lot. It's very fire engine cadmium red. It's very primary red, but I think it's cool. I think it's really cool. Okay, let's try this purple. purple, 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 purple. Just gonna go down. I love it. This purple feels um, like a warm purple, like a mauve. Something that's usable. It's actually magenta. Mm. It's your pump. It's my permanent rose. It's my pink. Yes. 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 
Not sure how much I'll use the neo colors now. Th this is kind of like closer to what I actually like. Look at that when it goes over the wet paint, uh, the wet areas. Very beautiful. What color is this? Can you even guess? Well, it kind of feels like a dark blue. Indigo, yes. Definitely indigo. Indigo. Beautiful. It really wets so prettily. How did I not know that this existed? And please, someone, please tell me. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy the things you... It's always underneath your nose and you don't really realize. And Okay, this is like a mid-blue cobalt. Almost cerulean, cerulean. I made a little green here. Mm. Okay, light green. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna like make this a little quicker by doing the rest of the colors. Dry and then wetting them completely. Cause you know, I'm an impatient gal. I know I don't ever have this color, it's terracotta color. Okay, and then what's going on? Are these two blacks or is one gray and is one a black? Oh, come on. Oh, broke it. It's okay. It's okay to break your colors. But the thing is, these two are so similar. I hope I don't mix them up. Let's go. Boom, boom, boom. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yes. Very bright. And this one here. I'm wetting everything. Not leaving much to dry. Viridian kind of green and this one is like a lime green mixing it together with a bit of that blue nice okay what's happening here what's this one this is like a sepia moss green sepia type color gorgeous what is this? This is a beautiful... Oh, it's much more intense after you put water in compared to it's dry. This is very like a raw sienna, burnt sienna. Okay, this is the first black I thought I had. And it feels like a very dark, purpley... It's got a purple hue to it mm. is that a black Would i consider that a black not a gray oh all right and then this is black it's definitely black gorgeous okay this is what i got from an ink tense little swatchy thing um should we keep on playing Let's see what I, happens if I just cross this purple over the green here. Ooh, pretty, 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 pretty. And I'm curious to see how it goes when um, it dries and how this yellow, for example, can layer over a dark color. And if this is totally dry, they're saying it won't lift anymore. And I think that is pretty cool. I don't know why, because I guess what you could do is you could layer, um, you know, neo color, which are constantly water soluble over it. So those are your Derwent Ink Tens blocks, ink blocks, swatches. Can't wait to use more of it. Aren't these just so cute? They remind me of Crayolas that I had 
as a kid or when I didn't really have Crayolas as a kid, but my kid has Crayolas when they were smaller. They don't really use Crayolas anymore. Uh, but yeah, let's play with these. This one is Salmon Rose. Oh, loving it, so pretty. I love a salmon rose. I don't know why do sa salmon, salmon and rose combine become this color? Not sure. Ah, oh, pink, pink, pink. This is just rose. Lovely. Liz Crimson. It's a bit more earthy than I thought it would be. Dry. But we'll see after we put water. Golden yellow. I needed a golden yellow. It's more of like a warm, dark Indian yellow kind of thing. Uh, Sahara yellow. Ooh. It is just a creamy yellow, I guess. Now we've got the warms. Let's go into the cools. This is Ver Veronese Green. I don't know why I got this color. I just felt like I wanted a playful green. Okay, and then we've got turquoise. Who doesn't love a turquoise? Well, I guess some people don't, but I do absolutely love a turquoise. And then, oops, we've done that one. This one is sky blue. All right, so boom, boom, boom. Let's add some color. I mean, add some water. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, I'm gonna add water to just half of this, okay? Gorgeous. I guess the difference between the Ink Tens blocks and Neo Color is that is you still get the richness, or maybe it's just the colors that I picked, but it's just creamy versus inky, if you know what I mean. So yeah, the Neo Colors has this creamy feel to the wet paint. Nice. Very nice. And how I've been trying to play with these is to put this over my watercolor, creating layers with this. So um, it's so fun to create layers with dry medium. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Love that so much. Golden yellow for the win. Sahara yellow. Oh, loving it. Oh, I'm so happy. I never knew that playing with colors can make you feel so happy. Oh gosh. Look at this one. What the? I, I've never used this color ever. It's, it's insane. I don't know what to do with it, but I'll do something with it. Turquoise. Ah, <sighs> makes you feel like going to Maldives. <laughs> that ocean. I just watched Avatar Way of Water with the kids yesterday on Disney+. Plus. Um, storytelling wise, a bit uh, weak, but the visual aspect, of course, just so beautiful, right? And the environmental message. Can't beat that. Wow. This is fun. This is sky blue. It's not sky blue at all. To me, you don't think of this color when you think of the sky, but very nice. Fantastic. All right, so we've got the Neo Colors, Intense Blocks all swatched. We've got the watercolor. And I don't know if this video is becoming too long, but let's try to make a painting out of all of them. So I'm using my B5 Etcher sketchbook. Um, it's 100% cotton uh, for this painting. And I decided to just film a little time, time lapse instead of doing it real time because this video is getting really long. And I just want to show you how I create something from all of the uh, mixed media paints that I bought. So. 
I'm here, I created all those first pink roses using permanent rose, uh, sorry, queen rose plus um, opera rose. And I, yeah, just going into the palette and using those six colors to make up the yellows and the blues and the greens and just having a ton of fun and just going with the flow and, um, you know, letting the magic of watercolor do its work. Just a nice thin base layer was what I wanted to achieve here. And then I, once the painting was dry, I went in first with this uh, Derwent Ink Tense block. I chose a Quinn, the Quinn magenta sort of color, and I wanted to give it a nice little background that I've been doing. And then I went in with some of the Neo color and just outline some of the petals and just making marks here and there and then going back into the Derwent with some of the darker colors and just going by feel and going by um, where I think I should make some marks. I am so new at this, just trying everything out um, because it was just so much fun. And then of course I needed to color in this background. So just with water going around with a wet brush to create a beautiful bright pink background to allow my foreground to pop. Lastly, I went in with a wet brush and just blended some of the ink tents and neo colors together that's on the, in the flowers and then went over again with some darker, drier marks. All right, so I have gone over the ink tents and neo colors with some parts with some water to do a bit of blends. And I just love the effect. Like look at this petal here. So I've just colored in and then use a bit of water to just blend a bit of the <coughs> edges in to create that shadow effect. Um, I didn't blend a lot of it all the way. I just want to, you know, keep it like half blended because this is so new to me. I am just experimenting with different ways to use it. I hope you guys feel inspired to play in your sketchbook, to use different mediums. For me, why mixed media has appealed so much is the whole layering aspect and um, creating depth and creating interest in, in paintings. And I might keep going with this, I might not, um, but we'll see. I hope you enjoyed this video. And there it is this very vibrant, crazy, layered, mixed media piece. I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know in the comments what you think, what supplies I should try, which I shouldn't, and which, are, which you think are a waste of money and which you think is so worth it. In the meantime, keep playing, stay creative, um, and also subscribe to my mailing list if you haven't already. The link is in the description below. I love to communicate with you and connect with you. Um, on email, I share lots of tips, advice, inspiration and stuff from my studio and my art life. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.